And it, uh, when we were coming back last night from Staten Island, we came by the train station where we had once uh, uh, had a meeting in 2008, May, May 31st, 2008, where God visited me and showed me this nation and showed me 23 states in this nation that he was reforming covenant with. Wow. Now, uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. Now, not every state in this nation formed covenant with him. And uh, there were only 23. Two were hanging in the balance. One was Florida. Now, the year that uh, COVID happened, the year before that, I went to Florida, I think, 18 times. And that state now is probably the leading state in covenant in America right now. Let's thank God for that. He showed me what each state looked like. He showed me the iniquities, uh, the thrones of iniquities in those states. And he showed me a triumphant river of gold that was going through the state. And he said, that's my triumphant reserve for the future. And told me that after 12 years, he would start forming that. Now, that started in 2020. And I believe we are part of that formation of the new flowing of a new river of glory here in the earth realm. And uh, then he showed me down deep within the earth realm, it looked like a uh, castle coming out of the earth of glory. And it, it looked like a furnace of glory. And uh, not every state had one of those. Every state had a triumphant reserve in America, but not every state had one of these. And he called them freedom outposts, which now I know will be the apostolic centers for the future where we gather. And when we would gather, this triumphant reserve would come into those places. When they came out, they were seven times brighter. So look at somebody next to you and say, you've just started shining. I really think that's what Peter was talking about. We carry a glory realm that is about to shine forth here. And we're pulling it into the earth realm. Now, as I said earlier, we're going to have to think outside the box. We're going to have to move into, go ahead, Aaron, new covenant ways of thinking so that we are not thinking conventionally. We cannot think with last season's mind skin from last season's wine skin. Now, that is an important phrase that I just said to you. If you're thinking out of last season's wine skin, you have last season's mind skin. And you're not shifting fully into all of the way that he is thinking. Now, this is what makes it so difficult. This is what makes us a very interesting place in Corinth, Texas, uh, because the Lord pulled me aside after that meeting and said, you will form a prototype for the future. This was not an assignment that I would have chosen, but it was the assignment he chose, and we didn't start off just bringing the church to a new place. He said, you're going to start back in the garden, and you're going to work your way into forming the gathering and fellowship and war room that I have planned for the future. And so we have been in that process for the last 12 years doing that. And uh, I can honestly say it's been interesting. I wouldn't want to go back and have to relive it all. I just know I've learned a lot from it, from the Lord in it. And we are at a new place, and what we've had to do is periodically die to everything. Now, the original church structure that we've been a part of is well over 40 years old, and we have killed that thing at least five times so we could let God raise it back up. And we've always had a remnant that has want, wanted to raise it back up. 
and watch God rebuild because you unlock the kingdom, Matthew 16 says. You build the church. And what we have to understand is starting in March 2020, God said, I have a new building plan. And it ha doesn't have to do with building because, see, you've still got the pillars that are here from the last key season. He wants to use those pillars. But then from that, he has to add the revelation necessary on how to press out from those pillars and start moving and harvesting what needs to be harvested in the area. And it is a, a, an interesting dynamic when you start doing that. I look at the church as a storehouse. And if you look at it as a storehouse, you'll be, uh, it'll, it'll work for you because you're having to build a new storehouse for this season's harvest. And that's what didn't happen in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, we had a move of God. I came, I got baptized in the spirit in that move of God, but the church didn't want to rebuild itself for that move of God. And so build is very a very important word for us to understand because it's just not constructing a building. It means to add sons and daughters to. And so right now we're in this process of redeveloping and adding sons and daughters too. Now, on top of that, this whole era, this historical era that we began in, uh, it started on se in September at Rosh Hashanah in uh, 2019, this era began. So that's the time frame we're in. And from that time frame, uh, it is called the era of pay. Well, pay is an interesting word in Hebrew, but we have to know it is an era of war. And because it's an era of war, it's a lot of conflict in what we're doing. Now, we have all experienced that conflict starting to intensify starting in 2020. So it can't be something we shy away from, especially here in New York, because you always have to know, I got one of the most flat times of my life was when I shared that uh, we were going in towards a nation in uh, 2000, I'd been sharing that, and uh, in 2001 I said, the war is inevitable. It will hit New York first. And uh, I stood up. I was in a, a meeting in uh, Mississippi. And uh, I said it, it, that meeting had about 1,500 people in it. And I said, it, it, I see the explosions coming into New York City. The first strike will be in New York City in this modern era of war that we've entered. And uh, and. Uh, it will then recreate how the world thinks in a lot of areas. Well, one guy stood up in the meeting and said, uh, I don't believe this. And I th this was on September the t 10th, 2001. And he said, I don't believe this, and I think you're leading the body astray, telling them something's going to happen. I said, well, you might be right. See, you always agree with your adversary, <laughs> quickly. I said, you might be right, but I think you're going to see this sooner than later. The next day, we all saw it. That guy, when I, next time I came back to Mississippi, he came forward and he asked forgiveness publicly because we don't really hear clearly the prophet's word because we have our minds set on what we are longing to hear and see. 